Welcome to the infinite grind in Honkai Star Rail. Hope you enjoy your stay, because just like artifacts in Genshin Impact, this is where you'll be spending every last drop of your sanity and stamina in the endgame. YouTube Frogs, at the time of recording, I am just about to reach Trailblaze level 48 on May 10th, about two weeks after initial launch, and have learned an extensive amount about the Relic System. So, in this video, I'm going to provide a complete and comprehensive overview of this Relic System in Star Rail. This includes how the Relic System works and differences from artifacts in Genshin Impact, where to farm them and Star Rail's Strongbox System, how Relic upgrading works and a look at main and substats, what good crit value looks like in Honkai Star Rail, and then finally, general recommendations for basically all current units. My aim is for this video to be a one-stop shop with my early recommendations, helping you understand the game and make you confident that you're investing in the right stuff. If it helps you out and you enjoyed the video, would appreciate a like on the video and a sub on the channel to get us closer to the 400,000 sub mark. Without further ado, let's begin. As you all reach TO40 and Equilibrium 3 and beyond, the Relic System is blown wide open with all 5-star Relics available to farm whether it's from Caverns of Corrosion or the Simulated Universe. And while it's a pretty inefficient use of your stamina to farm relics right away when you hit TL40, as in it's much better at TL50 or 60, you might still try a couple runs here and there to test your RNG. You get introduced to the system fairly early on in your journey, but you won't really invest too much time into it until you start making progress in the simulated universe and forgotten Hall Memory of Chaos, which is the Abyss equivalent from Genshin Impact. Once you reach this point, most likely you'll be forced to start upgrading your 4-star pieces but the raw stack gain that were given for free from exploration and story progression. When it comes to relics, the first major thing you'll notice is that there are 6 slots instead of 5 from Genshin Impact. We have the headpiece, which is the flower from Genshin Impact, where the main stat is always flat HP. We have the hands or gloves, which is the feather from Genshin Impact, where the main stat is always flat attack. The body piece, which is the circle from Genshin Impact, the only piece that can have either crit rate, crit damage, outgoing healing, or effect hit rate on the main stat. Feet and boots, which is the new sixth piece with no direct counterpart from Genshin Impact, is the only piece that can have speed main stat. The planar sphere, or orb as I like to call it, which is the goblet from Genshin Impact, the only piece that can have a type damage bonus. And then with the link rope, which is the time piece from Genshin Impact, the only piece that can have break effect, which is similar to elemental mastery, or energy regenerate, which is similar to energy recharge. These six slots are divided into a group of four and a group of two. The group of four follow the same system as Genshin Impact, with most of the sets granting an initial 2-piece bonus and an upgraded 4-piece bonus. These sets are primarily tailored to type damage bonuses, with the exception of the Musketeer and Meteor set that grant generic attack percent and break effect. The group of two follow a separate 2-piece system that grants more general stats such as attack, defense, or HP percent, crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge rate, and effective hit rate. You know how in Genshin there is 5 slots for a 4 piece set? So there's typically room for what's called an off piece that can be any set to finish the build. Usually this would be the elemental damage bonus goblet as it's the most difficult piece to get on set. Well, in Honkai Star Rail, as you can see, there's no room for an off piece. Ideal builds will have a complete 4 piece and 2 piece set, making it more difficult than usual to complete true endgame builds. My advice is to protect your type damage bonus orbs with your life. So, how do we obtain these relics then? The group of four, which is the headpiece, gloves, body, and boots, are found strictly in the Caverns of Corrosion. Each individual run costs 40 Trailblaze power, which is double to that of Genshin Impact, but there's an important difference. At Trailblaze level 40, which is about one week of progression, you are guaranteed already one 5-star relic per run. Whereas in Genshin, it wasn't guaranteed until AR45, which took about 3 weeks. Now this will scale up as we reach higher equilibrium levels, with what seems to be a 50% chance at 2 at TL50 or EQ4, and most likely reaching a guaranteed 2 per run at TL60, which is equilibrium 5, and then possibly a chance at more than 2 at equilibrium 6, which is unconfirmed. Some players at the time of recording are already TL50 and EQ4, and they have a chance but aren't guaranteed 2 per run. It seems like the intention of higher stamina costs per relic run was to allow 5-star relic farming even at the beginning of the game, and to normalize it at a higher trailblaze level by guaranteeing 2 later on. This makes sense, because in Genshin, even at AR60, you are only guaranteed 1 per 20 resin with a 10% at a second, with condensed resin, which is equivalent to 40 resin, guarantees you 2 with an 18% chance at 3 and 1% chance at 4 artifacts. The group of 2 pieces, which are the orb and rope, come from the simulated universe immersion rewards. These follow the same reward mechanics, costing the equivalent of 40 trailblaze power or 1 immersifier and granting 1 5-star relic at TL40. Since these pieces are responsible for your type damage bonus and energy regeneration rate or ER are, these will be the crux of endgame builds. On top of being able to farm for relics, a similar strongbox system from Genshin Impact also exists in Honkai Star Rail. 
Once you reach TL40 and can farm 5 star relics, the synthesizer page will also have a fourth tab called Relic Crafting. In this, you are able to craft any specific piece with randomized stats, but it costs 100 of these relic remains to do so. You can obtain 10 of these relic remains for each unleveled 5 star relic that you dismantle. Now, that seems like a lot, doesn't it? Well, in Genshin, we trade three trash five star pieces for one completely random five star new piece. It could be any of the five, and if you're looking for a specific one, it could take a long time. Don't ask me how that feels, okay? I definitely have not made an entire series on my YouTube channel just on artifact strongboxes and trying to upgrade just one piece. Yeah, it wouldn't be that insane. So, I personally like this system more. While it costs 10 pieces to craft one, you choose the specific relic type that you want to craft. And while the main stat and subsets are randomized, in the free battle pass, level Level 40 will grant you this thing called self-modeling resin, which will allow you to select the main stat of the piece you're crafting one time. And this is from the free battle pass, so everyone gets one. The paid battle pass just grants you 200 of the relic remains to craft them. Some advice, I highly recommend you save the self-modeling resin to craft either a specific type damage bonus orb, a energy regeneration rate or break effect rope, or a crit main stat body piece. Since we don't have room for an off piece, those will be the most annoying pieces to get to finish your builds. Relic upgrading. If you come from Genshin Impact's artifact system, upgrading a relic's main and subsets will be very similar and intuitive. Instead of upgrades happening every four levels and capping at plus 20 from Genshin, in Star Rail, they happen every three levels and cap out at plus 15. Five star relics will either start three or four subset lines and have five possible upgrades, which are first used to add stat lines until four are achieved. This means three line pieces will only get four subset upgrades because one is used to add the fourth line. A four-line star piece will get five total subset upgrades, having the potential to be a miracle piece. Four-star relics will either start two or three subsets and cap out earlier at plus 12, leaving only four possible additional rolls. This limits total possible subset upgrades to only two to three depending on the initial amount of starting substats. As a baseline for upgrading, due to the expensive cost for maxing out a relic, I recommend leveling 5-star relics to only plus 12 or plus 9, and leaving the last levels for when most of your relevant builds are complete. This is because the cost of going from plus 12 to plus 15 is basically leveling another piece to plus 12. Now, if you really do want to push pieces to their max, I would highly recommend first prioritizing crit rate or crit damage body pieces, type damage percent orbs, and then relevant stat percent mains like attack, defense, HP, energy regeneration rate, etc. For what you use to upgrade, I would advise using only your 2 to 4 star relics and unlucky leveled 5 star relics, which are not plus 0, to upgrade. 2 star relics grant 300 EXP, 3 star relics grant 500 EXP, and 4 star grant 1000 EXP. Any leveled relic will grant 80% of its total EXP, including the base. You can either feed the relic directly or salvage it first. The EXP in materials is identical. For 5 star relics, remember to use unleveled plus 0 ones for crafting fodder by salvaging them. If you do use a plus 0 5 star relic for EXP, it will grant 1500. Now, when it comes to actual stats, first major difference in Honkai Star Rail is that the roll strength of stats is generally lower than what you'd expect from Genshin Impact, but there is one more total piece of stats. Both main stats and subsets are affected by this. As an example, type damage bonus caps out at 38.8% in Star Rail, but 46.6% in Genshin Impact. A max crit rate substat roll is 3.2% in Star Rail, compared to 3.9% from Genshin, a whopping 20% relative decrease. Now, the exception to this rule is crit rate or crit damage main stat on body piece, which is actually slightly higher in Star Rail. As an example, a main stat crit damage piece on the body at plus 15 is 64.8%, whereas plus 20 in Genshin is 62.2%. But overall, the main stat values generally average out to be the same as Genshin, with the substat rolls being about 15-20% to 20 lower. And each character has 6 total pieces versus 5, which is a 20% increase in terms of pieces, so the total substat gain from your entire build is roughly the same. Now, Star Rail also has some unique stats that you may or may not be familiar with. This video will not cover the specifics of each of these stats because they are in-depth topics that require proper explanation. These are oversimplified descriptions that you can easily understand without being overwhelmed. First is speed. Determining your action value on the top left turn order. Turn this menu setting on to display the action value. Speed is both a main stat on boots only and a possible substat on any piece. In casual terms, higher speed goes first and more often than lower speed. Break effect. Determining not how quickly you break the weakness bar, but how strong the effect is when the bar is already broken. Break effect is both a main stat on the rope only, and a possible substat on any piece. In casual terms, it kind of functions like elemental mastery. Effect resistance. A stat that increases your chance to resist debuffs from enemies, effect resistance is only a substat on any piece. It does not exist as a main stat. 
Effect Hit Rate, a stat that increases your chance to land debuffs on enemies. Effect Hit Rate is both a main stat on body piece only and a possible subset on any piece. Because it's main stat and body only, Effect Hit Rate does compete with Crit Main Stat. It is currently believed to be a multiplicative value according to the following formula, which we won't cover in depth here due to info overload. And finally, Energy Regeneration Rate. Very similar to Genshin's Energy Recharge, this stat is only available as a main stat on the rope pieces. That's right, ERR is not rollable as a substat. It is also mechanically much different in Star Rail. Here's a simplified overview. Every single character generates the same amount of base energy on basic attack, skill, or upon getting hit. Here are the values, all increased by ERR. Basic attack is 20, skill is 30, getting hit is 8, enemy kill is 10. Ultimate cost currently varies between 100 to 160 depending on the character. In Star Rail, ERR stat also caps out much lower than in Genshin at only 19.4% for 5 star relics compared to 51 in Genshin. Even though it's drastically lower, it is one of the most powerful stats for tanks and supports, with just 10, 20, or 30% having a noticeable impact on the turn requirement to fill ultimate energy. What about substats? So substat count is exactly the same as Genshin, with 5 star pieces starting with 3 or 4 substats, and 4 star pieces starting with 2 or 3. They get upgrades at plus 3, plus 6, plus 9, plus 12, 15, for the same amount of total rolls as in Genshin. Substat appearance is also identical, besides the stats that can appear no matter what, type damage bonus and ERR. On any single piece, its subsets are randomized to be any stat except for what the main set already has. So for example, if the main set is crit damage, it will not appear on the substats. Now, you know how Genshin subsets have a range of rolls? For example, 5 star crit rate subset in Genshin has 4 possible rolls, 2.7, 3.1, 3.5, and 3.9. Well, the difference between the lowest roll versus the highest roll is 1.2%, which is almost a 50% increase over the lowest roll. In Star Rail, substats have only 3 possible rolls. For crit rate, we have 2.5, 2.9 and 3.2 and then for crit damage we have 5.1 5.8 and 6.4 the difference between the lowest and highest crit rate roll is only 0.7 which is about a 25 percent increase over the lowest roll i find that this subset change to be a great improvement over genshin's system with only three possible rolls i would consider low medium and high the variance for super lucky versus unlucky pieces is so much smaller meaning you can't get absolutely owned in rolls Rejoice! Low roll depression in Star Rail is not as punishing. Alright, with all this in mind, what does crit value in Honkai Star Rail look like? Crit rate and crit damage caps out at 3.2 and 6.4% respectively. So a hypothetical 5 star relic with 4 line max roll start of 3.2 and 6.4 and 5 max upgrades all into either of those stats should be around 44.6 to 44.8% arranged to account for rounding which is substantially lower than Genshin's 54%. This means that an average good piece in Star Rail ranges from 30 to 35 CV, with 40 to 44 being insane. In Genshin, 35 is really good, and 40 to 50 crit value pieces is considered insanely good, with 4 pieces of 35 to 40 CV and 1 62 main stat circlet with 30% substat gives about a 230 to 250% CV build. In Star Rail, 5 pieces of 30 to 35 CV plus 1 65 main stat body with about 20% substat gives 235 to 260 CV build. So the total crit value from relics overlaps almost identically with Genshin, and so on average you can still aim for the usual 70 crit rate plus 140 crit damage strictly from relics. This also places very high priority on crit rate or crit damage main set body pieces because it guarantees 32.4 crit rate or 64.8 crit damage which is equivalent to 10 max rolls on substats. Also, as far as I know, the stat trace nodes kind of resemble ascension stats. Some characters from these trace nodes have built in crit rate or crit damage, so keep this in mind when trying to complete your builds. It's definitely super high priority for crit rate, crit damage main set on the body pieces for hunt or erudition characters because it's the largest guaranteed amount you'll get and it'll account for about half of an average build's crit rate or crit damage from relics only. So that's a complete overview on the relic system in Honkai Star Rail. In this final section, I'll provide brief recommendations on 4-piece plus 2-piece relic choices for each character released so far in the game. These are all subject to change and there's a lot of characters I have very little experience over so take my recommendations with a grain of salt and trust your own judgment if you have lots of experience with a certain character. First off, Universal Early Game DPS slash Support Set. Simulated Universe World 3 a Difficulty 2 or higher is pretty stamina efficient, with the Space 2-piece granting attack percent, which any attack DPS can use, and then the Fleet 2-piece granting self HP percent, and also a team attack percent, which stacks. You're gonna have 16 to 24 percent attack with multiple characters using this 2-piece on the same team. Preservation Path. Preferred stats, defense, energy regeneration rate, speed, and effect resistance. For March 7th, 4-piece Land of Purity with 2-piece Vonwack over 2-piece Bellabog set. This is a pure defense plus ERR build, Vonwack for ERR, or Bellabog for defense plus effect hit rate on freezes. 
Japara. Four piece nine of purity over the two piece purity plus guard set over the four piece guard set with two piece Von Wack over Bellabog. This is because defense is greater than damage reduction for his shield strength, and Von Wack provides ERR or Bellabog for the defense and effect hit rate on his skills freeze. Fire MC, two piece nine of purity plus two piece guard over the four piece nine of purity with two piece Von Wack or Bellabog set. This provides the best balance of defense and damage reduction for primary tank. Fire MC does not gain much value from either the four piece set bonus of the guard or knight of purity because MC's shield is is not that large and very rarely reduces HP below a certain threshold due to the large amount of damage reduction. Bonwack for ERR and first move or Bellabog for defense plus effect hit rate for taunt chance. Enemies can resist Fire MC's taunt, so effect hit rate is quite valuable. Destruction Path. Preferred stats, crit, attack, HP, and speed. Clara, 4-piece physical or 2-piece physical plus 2-piece guard with 2-piece unearned or 2-piece Von Wack. Either full offensive 4-piece physical or half-half with damage reduction guard. Von Wack for ERR and ultimate uptime, or you can run a nerd for crit rate and all her counters are considered follow-up attacks to gain the 15% damage bonus. Arlen, 4-piece lightning or 2-piece lightning and 2-piece musketeer, which is the attack percent set, alongside 2-piece inert. Hook, 4-piece fire and 2-piece inert, and then physical trailblazer, 4-piece physical and 2-piece inert. Abundance path, preferred stats, ERR, speed, HP, and effect resistance. No matter what character, currently at least, whether it's Natasha or Bailu, for both of them, their best in slot is 4-piece healing set and 2-piece Von Wack over the 2-piece fleet set. 4-piece healing grants one extra skill point when you enter a battle, and then the Von Wack set gives you energy recharge, which is top priority stat for abundance characters, and if you haven't gotten that yet, you can use 2-piece fleet set for the 8% team attack. Harmony Path. Preferred stats, ERR, speed, and the other stats really depends character by character. All Harmony current best in slot is 4-piece Musketeer plus 2-piece Von Wack set. The reasoning is that the Musketeer's 6% universal speed and the energy recharge on Von Wack are universal best in slot stats for these supports. The alternatives, Bronya can also use the 4-piece wind set for 25% action forward after her ultimate. It's overall weaker than Musketeer because it only affects one action after each ultimate. can also ruin speed tuning if you want Bronya to buff someone right after they take their turn. For Bronya, 2-piece Celestial over 2-piece Von Wack set is also very nice due to her ultimate converting her own crit damage to a team crit damage boost. The 16% crit damage boost from the set translates to roughly a team plus 3% crit damage boost from her ultimate's percent conversion. Asta, 4-piece Meteor set for break effect. Asta is a very efficient fire weakness bar breaker, which this set enables free extra damage on break and also flat energy gain. Overall, still weaker than Musketeer because you'd rather just have raw speed. For Tingyan, no alternatives. Speed plus ERR is best. Ahility Path. Preferred stats, effect hit rate, speed, attack, and crit. If you prioritize debuffing, then effect hit rate plus speed is more valuable. If you prioritize your Nihility DPS, prioritize attack and crit. Welt's 4-piece imaginary set with 2-piece effect hit rate or 2-piece Von Wack or 2-piece inert. As a semi-DPS and debuffer, 4-piece imaginary is tuned already specifically for him. And then for the 2-piece simulated universe sets, he's open for effect hit rate or energy recharge and the first move or crit rate. They all can work and be successful depending on how you play him. For Pella, 4-piece Musketeer or 2-piece Ice and 2-piece Musketeer, alongside 2-piece Effect Hit Rate or 2-piece Von Wack. As a primary role, she's a Defense Breaker and a Buff Removal, so 4-piece Musketeer grants her the Speed Bonus, and then 2-piece Effect Hit Rate to land your debuffs, or the 2-piece Energy Recharge for more Ultimate Uptime are both valuable. Shampoo, 2-piece 2-piece Wind Musketeer combo, or 4-piece Musketeer, or the 4-piece Wind set, with 2-piece Effect Hit Rate or 2-piece Von Wack or 2-piece Inert. Primary damage from Shampoo is in his damage over time, which is pure attack scaling and cannot crit. So I prefer Musketeer for the combination of speed and attack, and then either effect hit rate or Von Wack for more effect hit rate, plus attack or more ultimates. Hunt Path. Preferred stats, crit, attack, and speed. Seelie. 4-piece quantum and 2-piece inert. General quantum damage, crit rate, and ultimate damage. Dan Hung. 2-piece, 2-piece wind musketeer, 4-piece musketeer, or 4-piece wind with 2-piece inert. It's just raw damage for Dan Hung. Personal preference is 2-piece, two 2-piece two Wind Musketeer. It's easier to farm and it's universal damage increase because the Wind 4-piece does not do DPS. Su Shang, 4-piece Physical and 2-piece Inert. Pretty standard. Yan Qing, 2-piece Ice and 2-piece Musketeer is better than the 4-piece Ice, in my opinion, with 2-piece Attack or 2-piece Inert. This is because 4-piece Ice does not give him a crit damage boost for his ultimate. So 2-piece 2-piece is more universal combo that benefits him 100% of the time. 2-piece Attack or Inert depends on subsets and preference. His kit gives him base 80% crit rate, so your build stacks attack and crit damage. 2-piece Celestial is a bait here. The crit rate boost only affects the first attack, and Yan Qing already has nearly 100% crit, and he's stacking crit damage on all of his substats, so 2-piece Attack might be more value. Erudition Path. Preferred stats, crit, attack, and speed. 
Himeko, four piece fire, two piece inert. Herta, two piece ice and two piece musketeer, or four piece musketeer with two piece inert. Serval, two piece, two piece lightning and musketeer, or four piece lightning or four piece musketeer with two piece inert. I generally find four piece lightning to be a little bit strange because you must spam your skill to get the 20% attack all the time, or we can just run two piece musketeer for 12 piece attack permanently. So I don't know, it's a trade off. And then Qingche, four piece quantum or two piece inert. Two piece celestial on Qingche is an alternative if you all in on her first attack after gambling away your skill points. So that might be fun if you want to try that out. And of course, for the upcoming Jing Yuan, a four-piece lightning over two-piece, two-piece lightning plus musketeer set plus two-piece inert. Those are just my general recommendations using the current set of relics we have in the game. Just like in Genshin, don't be afraid to use four-star relics in the early game. It's really stamina expensive early to try to maximize a pure five-star relic build. And even then, RNG can be brutal to deal with. Let me know in the comments what you think of the relic system. And if you learned something, don't forget to like and sub to support the channel. Thanks as always for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.